Well, hello guys, and welcome to an Infinity Train review. And hey, it actually happened. I remember when we covered the pilot for Infinity Train, when it aired back in like February of 2017. And yeah, at the time I was like, yeah, you know, I kind of wish this was a show. And hey, here we are a little over, what is that, two and a half years later? And it's an actual show with all the elements that come with being an actual show and showiness and all that jazz. Well, I say it's an actual show, and it, I mean, it technically is, but it's also, is this a mini series? Is that what we call this? Because, well, yes, I know it has since been confirmed that there is going to be a second season. Right now, there's only... 10 11 minute episodes or 8 11 minute episodes and one 22 24 minute episode so it's just a real quick thing one and done um there's going to be a second season i did see that on twitter a few days ago now i guess because this the entire show aired over the span of a week two 11 minute episodes a night for five days of course, I am very bad at keeping up with stuff like this. I mean, that's kind of what lost me on, on OKKO OK at first, is that they aired like a bunch of episodes one after another, day after day, and I just, I couldn't keep up. So eventually I put it by the wayside and came back to it when it went on its like first big hiatus or whatever. And yeah, OKKO OK is pretty good as well. That's going into its, that's in its final season, huh? I don't think there, it'll be done before the end of the year. God, that's crazy. But yeah, here we are. So going into this, I might as well say, so I'm going to do, even though I can't keep up watching it, now that it's like done airing, I feel like I can like sit back and I'm going to do it. But my plan is, originally I, I got up this morning and I was like, you know, I'll watch all 10 episodes, all 10, 11 minute episodes, you know, whatever. Let's just put it like that. And then I'll do the videos, right? One a day. But then I watched this first episode and realized, you know what? Let's not do that. I think I'm just going to, I'll watch the, like I normally do. I'll watch an episode, then I'll do the notes and all that, and then we'll do the review. So I don't, so even though the entire first season has happened, I haven't seen past this first episode, and that's the way I'm going to keep it. I mean, I'll probably do the rest of the episodes today, the day this goes out, Monday the 12th, hopefully. I'll probably do, right, I'll record everything preemptively, but while making these videos, I don't know what's going to happen, because while I was watching the first episode, I was kind of like, you know, I kind of want to figure out the mystery, I kind of want to converse with y'all about the mystery of course i want to try to guess what's going on i'm inevitably going to get it wrong i've been around this block enough times to know i always get it wrong even when i'm right i'm wrong but i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to take a stab and hey you know it could be fun i mean it's from what we've seen so far it's a good show i do recommend it and especially with that short Length? Yeah, you could totally get through this in, like, two hours. Oh. Yeah, no, about, you could probably get through this entire thing, all ten episodes in about two hours. So, yeah, no, it's worth your time, but, hey, I've stalled for, like, four minutes. Let's actually get into it. So, it starts off with Tulip and her friend. They're coming home from school, and Tulip's really excited to go to game designer camp, because she wants to be a game designer. They're in, presumably, Wisconsin... I don't think we know she's going to Wisconsin and Tulip and her friend. We get this little dialogue exchange. Basically, the entire thing is to set up that her parents are divorced. I, I feel like it's kind of forced and unnecessary, especially because in like two scenes, they're actually going to go more detail into it and we're going to get it directly from the horse's mouth. So, I mean, I feel like, yes, they needed to set a few things up, but then I feel like the following scenes set it up or more organically so it's less needed but yeah we see tulips working on her game and things are supposed to fall and run into other things bad uh rad guys popping bad guys sounds like a kind of funny show and yeah I, I i can relate to this i tried to make a platformer once and it went a 
about as well as this did with all the problems. But she she's all excited to go to this game developer conference camp thingy this weekend. But then her parents, who are recently divorced, that's the... They don't actually ever say, like, they're recently divorced. But the way this whole dialogue exchange goes, you can tell that it, this is a very recent thing. And that's why I think doing it this way, instead of the exposition dump at the uh, earlier, like a minute earlier, the way Tulip talking to her mother is much more organic. Because, yeah, basically the father is busy... Like, he double-booked himself, and the mother is busy with work, so she can't go to her game developer camp in Wisconsin? I, I don't even remember the city's name. The, the name I'm thinking of is definitely... It's o Oshka? Oshka? Uh, the, the, name I'm actu the name I'm thinking it is, I know isn't the right name, because it's super <laughs> offensive. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be laughing at that. But yeah, so she can't go and she gets all mad. And of course, it's her struggle living with her divorced parents. So she decides to run away, run to the gaming camp. Title card. Yeah, you know, basically, it's basically the setup. It's basically the first like hour of Inside Out. But without all the Inside Outness, the weirdness is going to come later. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, it all gets set up in like three minutes. Real quick, it's, it is cliche, and part of me doesn't, I, I kind of hate this cliche, but you need, you need a plot device to get the plot in motion. Something had to happen, and her running away is good enough, I guess. Also, I want to talk about the score real quick. I like the score for the show. I, re I pointed, I rewatched my review of the first, of the pilot, it's the audio is very cracky, very cracky. So yeah, um, in even in the original pilot, I remember the score being really good, and yeah, the score here is really good as well. We'll talk about sign design in a minute. But she's ran away and she's kind of lost in the snow. But hey, this weird magical green train shows up and it's going exactly where she needs it to. Is it a mirage? Who knows? Who knows what's going on? All right, it's it's just getting our plot in motion. She needs to get on the train somehow, and this train says it's going to take her to her destination, even though it's one of those stranger danger things. She does it anyways. So, boom, she's in this, like, snow room, and there's these, like, snowmen, but there's this little, like, robot thing, and it's asking if it's if Tulip is its mother, and the robot thing, it's got like two voices. One is Wheatley from Portal, who's voiced by, oh God, what's his name? Not Ricky Gervaisa, not Carl Pilkington. It's the third guy. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. Stephen Merchant, maybe? Is it Stephen Merchant? I don't remember. Don't at me. And then the other side of uh, one one, the robot's name is one one. We'll get it in like a minute, maybe two. Is uh Marvin? Is that the Alan Rickman's character from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? The movie may not have been good, but uh, his character works. The books are really good. Or the radio plays. I've I've listened to the radio plays on car rides. Really, really good stuff. R recommend it. And they go to a, so they find this door and they open it. And I like how, I didn't mention this, but originally the Infinity Train logo was, Infinity Train, that's what I called it in the pilot, was, it was the Infinity logo, but the Y acted as like the crossover axis. Really clever. This time the T is in the Infinity and it's still making the Infinity symbol, but it's kind of half and half. It, like it's still the Infinity symbol, but it's, it's slanted weird, and that makes me wonder if it means something. Also, the eye is part of the symbol. So, yeah, it makes... I, I, I don't know if it's, like, sty it's just stylized because the doors also have that style, or if there's, like, something greater going on. So, they end up... So, they move on to the next car, and it's a grid car. Because, like, there's this giant wasteland in between the cars, 
and the grid car at first it's like it's just white room but then they start like building stuff in it and she builds like an eiffel tower it's 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 like a lego minecraft kind of like building idea it's kind of cute at first i thought they were going with this idea that like every layer is like a different color so like the bottom layer is red the next layer up is blue the next layer up is green the next layer up is orange right it was like this layer thing but like every structure works different like you think the bottom layer should be universally red but no it's not sometimes it's red sometimes it's yellow it just changes it's just i would have been a nice bit of continuity but they don't stick to it so she removes her glove and finds this weird number 115 on her hand what does it mean what does it mean who knows well we'll talk about it i i have a few ideas most of which don't track but we'll talk about it so she wants to get off the car so she heads out and they're not they're not in wisconsin anymore toto this doesn't look a lot like wisconsin and they the train has stopped but they see this like beam of light come out of the sky it hits into the train there's this guy in it and then he gets dusted yeah no pre pretty gruesome but so who knows what this means we'll talk about it and then so she tries to run away but she gets stuck in the mud she can't leave then these weird like cockroach things start burrowing out of the ground she runs away back into the grid car did i say the episode is called the grid car this episode is called the grid car i, I feel like i didn't say that because i was so busy in my preamble and then uh, on the grid car, this thing, like, it starts to light up and it starts stealing her life force, which is really interesting. But uh, one one creates uh, like a little house. It's cute. And they're able to trap it and they get away. All's well that ends well. I might as well also with this cockroach thing. Something I noticed was, the, well, I think the score is good. The sound design is okay like there's one point where she builds a little wall and the cockroach runs into it and you expect it to like make a thud sound as it hits it nothing happens i felt like it should have made an impactful sound it's like when someone falls off a cliff and you don't hear like a thud it just it feels like it's missing something and well that's more of the that's more on the rare side than the norm it's still like it does happen from every once in a while every once in a while the sa i say it's just something i noticed but yeah, that's the that's the first half of the first episode. It's it's it, it sets everything up. Yeah, some of it kind of cliche. Yes, are there some neat visuals? Yeah. God, I didn't even talk about the animation. I'd argue the animation is from the pilot to this one. The animation is technically better. Part of me wasn't sure about it at first because I actually like Tulip's design of um in the origin in the pilot i like to and this one makes it a lot more she's a lot rounder this time and i didn't really when, based on the trailers i didn't really know how i like that i kind of like the more like angleness of the pilot but actually seeing it in motion it does really work it is going to be interesting because i know episode three yeah episode three is the corgi they go back to the corgiopolis with and I, i'm pretty sure atticus is back so yeah, so comparing that to the original is going to be interesting. I wonder how like well they compare to one another because the graphics, or the graphics, the animation is good. The backgrounds are pretty good. Yeah, it's it's all it's all okay. It's all getting the mystery set up. It's giving us a lot of pieces. Some of which I am. It's enough to get me curious to watch more. And so, yeah, let's go on to episode two. So it starts off, they're in a room with a cross. Is it a crossword puzzle? I cannot for the life of me remember what these are called. I was trying to Google it and nothing was giving me what I wanted. Because it's, it's crosswords, right? It's words that go through each other. But I know they have another name. But it was, my, my brain just like farted and I could not remember this word. But they're trying to get through this room and uh, one one screws it up. I always, I, li I like all these little tiles. They're all really cute little gags. Yeah, that's kind of neat. They go to the next room, which has like these gnome wizards that run on their beards and they talk like Pokemon. 
eh, eh, sure. And then they go to the next room. It's a pinball room. It's okay. That's kind of neat. Again, it's shown again. This is all set up our first episode. Like, Hey, what's going on here? So this, this second episode is like, Hey, rooms can be different. Oh, this episode is called the beach car. I forgot to mention that. And so they're in between cars and she's talking about how like, oh, we have to do, we have to, cause they're looking for the conductor. We got to do work first, play second, even though like during work, you can get pizza or have hose fights and all that. She's showing that. I don't, I, I don't know who voices are. I, I'm always bad at these. I, it's, it's definitely familiar. Again, I, I, uh, God, I should probably look that up. I should probably, that's one I should probably look up. But while she's on there, she looks at her hand and notices that the number, which was 115, has gone down to 114. What does this mean? I don't know. So it's Ernie Hudson's Atticus? Really? Oh, that's cool. Ashley, Ashley Johnson is, um, Tulip. Jeremy Crutch? Crucial is glad one and Owen Dennis is sad one. Oh, that's that's funny. Glad one and sad one. I didn't know that. That's cute. But yeah, so the number's going down. What does the number mean? And later on in the episode, we see the number. It, it, with, they don't even comment on it, but it goes down from 14 to 13. Now, I'm not taking the pilot into account. Let's just pretend the pilot doesn't even exist. So what does the number going down mean? My first thought was that it, like she says, it's like a timer. Maybe my, maybe it's like a timer going down, but that doesn't really work. Cause I feel like she spends a lot of time in some of these previous cars, especially that word search car would take forever, but yet no time goes down. It's not until she's done like three car, three, four cars, however many. My, another idea is that it's how many cars she's gotten through. But again, that it doesn't go down in between cars. So that can't, like, it's how many cars from the front. Another idea was maybe the number indicates how many people have to get off before her stop. Because we know based on that other guy who gets snapped, there are other people on this train. So my idea was like, what if it's like a queue? Like when you go to the DMV and you get a queue number, there are this many people until she can get off. But I don't think that works either because then the number would have gone down when the guy got snapped. So, so far, I have no idea how this works. I do think, though, just based on this early impression, I do think the train says she's going, it's taking her to... Uh, Oshka? I, again, don't care. I, uh, it's, it's Wisconsin. And so my guess is it's actually going to take her there, but she has to like do something to get the number down. And when the number hits zero, even though it looked like the guy got snapped, he didn't actually get snapped. That's just the train taking him to his destination. That's why the train stops because it's like them getting off basically. And we see when she gets on the train, she gets blasted by this light. So this guy getting off is also blasted by light. Like they're like, oh, this is a bad thing. My my current train of thought is that it isn't. They're seeing it as a bad thing because it looks like a bad thing. But no, this is actually people like getting to their destination. And it's going to end with some sort of like magical feel like, oh, if you wonder hard enough, if you believe you can find the infinity train too, and it'll take you wherever you want to go. <laughs> you know, like kids movies do from time to time. I'm just pulling that out of my ass. Okay, where was I? Okay, so they're on the beach car and there's this weird water guy called Randall. Randall is great, super funny. And there's this cat and the cat's trying to sell stuff to Randall and the cat mentions the conductor and Tulip freaks out and reveals a little too much information to the cat. And the cat's like, yeah, sure, I'll help you get to the conductor. This is where that, because one one says at some point that, hey, if the number hits zero, she's going to die. And the cat points out that, hey, one one is kind of stupid. So why would they trust one one to say that when the number hits zero, they're going to die? But the cat makes a deal with Tulip that if Tulip fixes her moving thingy, her transportation, and gives her one one, 
the cat will talk to the conductor and help her get off the train. And so she agrees to the deal. She starts fixing the moving thingy. It's a big deal. I feel like fixing the movie thingy is kind of important. So I'm, I'm amazed the, the cat just keeps wanting, but I know this is to teach Tulip a valuable lesson. We found out the origin of her name, where it's she, when she was born, she wasn't breathing, but then she got better. So they named her after a perennial flower. If you don't know a perennial flower, from what I remember... A perennial flower is just a flower that lives like more than two years. There may be other like specifics to it, but from what I remember, it's just a flower that lives longer. Yeah, so I, I get the meaning of the name, right? She she had problems at birth and it looked like she was going to die, but because she didn't, oh, she's lived longer. So, hey, that's where the name comes from. Yeah, I, it makes sense. Part of me wonders if they're Chekhov's gunning this, where it's actually going to be like, hey, this is going to come back later. I don't remember what I'm thinking of. There was a show or a movie or something where the kid had asthma. I don't even think it was a good show or movie, but the kid has asthma and his lungs close up, but they're in like poisonous gas or a burning building or something they get the kid out and then because of the kid's asthma and his lungs closing up he manages to survive the burning building so part of me is like is the show gonna do something like that i doubt it i think this is just like a one-off thing but eh, something i do think they're Chekhov's gunning is the the donut holer it's basically just a pipe they're making holes out of later on in the episode she'll put it in her backpack that better be a Chekhov's gun. I, I hope in every episode she gets a little something that eventually comes back in the 10th episode or 9th episode. I, th I think that would be really neat, but we'll see. But they need a, but oh yeah, Tulip gives her a daisy because sentimental, ah, cute, it's not a, <laughs> it's me with uh, the hibiscus and the rose. But so they, the uh, Randall takes them down to the ocean market. They find the gear, but this kind of shows Tulip's selfish motivations. Another thing that surprisingly hasn't changed from the pilot. And she's willing to trade the flower for the gear. So there's something about the price of what the things you desire. It's, it's okay. And then the cat takes her transportation dealy and takes one one and they head off to find the conductor and they say it's going to take like a week or two to find the conductor. I like the transportation dealy. I like how it works that it shoots the thing out and then it magnetically suctions itself to the thingy, but it can also like ride kind of like a rail car where it's got the sparks going off. It's a nice design. Tulips all feel inside in the beach car. We get a team of Randall's again. Randall's really funny. I think he really works. And then Tulip gets Randall help to go after the cat and they have a little chase scene. It's, it's okay. Again, Randall's still really funny and they're eventually able to catch, catch the cat, stop the transportation dealie and Tulip gets one, one back and everything's in that. Well, and ends well, that ends well. The cat says she's making a mistake. I don't know. That might come back. Hopefully, maybe potentially again, we've only got nine episodes to work with. So we'll see. We shall see. But yeah, Tulip makes up with one on and in. Hey, she's she's growing as a person. So yay. This is a journey of self and personal discovery. And yeah, the, the second episode's okay. I don't I, I kinda like the first one more just because it's a little more like set up. This one's I don't know, the cat's I don't really like the cat that much. I do like Randall though. Eh, I mean it's okay. They're they're both good episodes. I am interested to, to see where the show goes from here and yeah it's it's I, I like the idea of it i even though part of me wants a season because the idea of an infinite train with infinite cars has a lot of potential and the fact that i know it has a second season is a good thing but part of me is like a tight curated experience could be a lot of fun i haven't seen one of these since what over the garden wall which i still have not seen <laughs> But yeah, no, I, the, the show's done enough to get me interested. I mean, I was already interested from the pilot, but here coming a second time around with all the changes and whatnot that's been made in the past, like, two and a half years, it shows that it's still got it. It's got the intrigue. While I haven't seen anything that comes after here, I have heard from a few people who have seen it that it is really good. 
So yeah, I'm super excited. And hey, over the rest of the week, we hopefully we should be tackling it. I mean, this is a 25 minute video, so God, this is going to be a pain to edit. <laughs> Oh God, it's it's weird to be back in the groove. It's weird to be back in the groove. But yeah, um, stay tuned for more. Until next time, peace.